listen to the conversation between a student who is looking for a place to book regular meals and a manager of an eating point. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. The conversation relating to this will be played first. Excuse me, I'm a new overseas student from Business Studies Department. I'm looking for a good place to book my regular meals. As I can see a lot of students in the canteen, is it the right place and the right time to speak? Yes, sure. I'm the manager to handle bookings of regular meals. What do you want to ask? I want to ask about the charges for mails and the procedure to book it in advance. The student is from Business Studies Department. So Business Studies has been written as an answer for the example. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Excuse me, I'm a new overseas student from Business Studies Department. I'm looking for a good place to book my regular meals. As I can see a lot of students in the canteen, is it the right place and the right time to speak? Yes, sure. I'm the manager to handle bookings of regular meals. What do you want to ask? I want to ask about the charges for meals and the procedure to book it in advance. Well, the charges are very economical and the booking procedure is also very simple. Before that, I would like to know the cost. For students, breakfast is $2.00 which serves two items of your choice from menu. Lunch is $5, which allows you to choose four items with one sweet dish, and dinner is $4 with buffet. There are varieties of eatables to choose and enjoy. OK, and what are the timings to have meals? Right, breakfast timing is 7 to 9 a.m. Lunch break is between 12 and 3 p.m. And dinner is 6 to 8 p.m. That's fine. A class is taught at 9.30 a.m. and lunch break is between 2 to 3 p.m. The timings are suitable for me. There is also provision of taking away meals but also packing charges are extra. No, I don't want that but in case an emergency, it is okay. What are the charges for it? It's only one dollar per meal. Okay. Now look at question 6 to 10. Listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Now, can you tell me something about the meal plan facilities as some of my friends have told me about it? We have three types of meal plans, a daily, a weekly and a monthly meal plan. For a day, we charge $9 for a week from Monday to Sunday. We charge $50 and for a month, it's $175. All payments is in advance and you can't change it in between the order. For any kind of packing, charges are extra. Is there any requirement before booking? Nothing special. You have to fill a form and your canteen card will be issued. There will be a canteen card number through which you can book your meal plan in advance. What are the requirements in the form? Your name, department and enrolment number. Along with one thing which is very important is the signature of your department head. OK. When should I fill the form? Any time between 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thank you. That is the end of section 1. You will now have some time to check your answers.
turn to section 2. Section 2. You're going to hear a newsreader who is telling news to the people. First look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen to the recording and answer questions 11 to 16. Now it's time for the main headlines and local news for today. First of all, the report related to the proposed flyover and other developments around the village of Strawberry was published. This morning, the news has created a lot of interest. The new flyover will pass along the south side of the village it will cross the river and separate the village from the city. But that is not the end. There are also plans to build societies, each comprising of 50 to 80 houses. There is also a proposal to build an industrial and technological park where companies can establish their production. A new shopping centre, recreational centre with all sports facilities and swimming pool is also proposed. All the plans are on the farmland and the government will pay a handsome compensation for it. Now look at questions 17 to 20. As the talk continues, answer questions 17 to 20. Another hot news which is different is that the government is planning to change the recruitment procedure. The new government is planning to hold more competitions and recruitment will be directly on the merit criteria. It seems that this year students will have to face cut-throat competition. There will be two exams. One preliminary and the other mains. Every deserving candidate will be given a chance to take the exam. And now for something quite different. This year's exam's results have been declared and there are a lot of happy faces. It is the first time that 100% success rate has been declared for senior secondary exams. It seems that a huge rush will be there in the colleges to get admission. We spoke to many principals of schools and colleges. They are very happy to see the result and the success rate. There will be another new bulletin at 6pm. Till then, have a good day. That is the end of Section 2. You now have some time to check your answers. Section 3 in this section, you will hear a conversation between Julie and Michael, who are studying mass communication. Both of them are filling a feedback form. Look at questions 21 to 30.
Listen to the conversation and answer questions 21 to 30. Oh, Michael, I have not filled the form which the tutor gave us in the class. The project feedback form? Yes. Shall we do it together, if you don't mind? OK, a y let's have a look. What is there in the form? Let's fill the first column. It's course code. Uh, it's mass communication. OK, a y mass communication. I know it. But the form demands a code. MS 18 something. MS 180, isn't it? Mm, that's it. OK. a y And what about the dates? When did we start? I remember. It was my mother's marriage anniversary on 24th April. It doesn't seem that long, does it? No, the course will end this week on Saturday, July 21st. So I'm sure the course started on the 20th of April. That was my mother's birthday. Now, let's have a look at the next question. Give comments on the different aspects of the course. OK, a y what's the first query? Oh, about the course contents. What do you think? Uh, they were very clear, isn't it? Yes, it's true. The content was absolutely clear. Uh, OK, a y anything else about the content? The best thing about the course is the sessions given to us online in the beginning. It was very useful, so I definitely put that down. Now, going on to suggestions for improvement, one thing I would like to give suggestion for, I think we should have done a bit more practice in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely correct. In the beginning, I thought it would be very easy and then all of a sudden in the second half, we got a whole load of work, reading, projects and assignments. Yes, it would have been better if it was from the beginning only. OK, a y now course delivery. Does that mean teaching part? s Yeah, I suppose it is good. The standard of teaching is awesome. It's from the heart to the mind. I mean, the techniques, the audiovisual aids were amazing. Exceptionally better than any other course I've been on. Yes, I agree. Let's pen it down. What about suggestions for improvement? I, um, I didn't think. It was all wonderful when we had group discussion sessions that went on for so long. They should be limited to a specific time, not so long, otherwise the repetition of ideas start. Now, on to the practical aspect of the course. Oh, now what was good about the lab sessions and handouts? Yes, in my opinion, the handouts were very good and some of them were really great, with sources and websites. One problem which most of the students faced was about the reserved copies in the library. Yes, there weren't enough copies on the reserve in the library and not enough computers. Long waiting was there. OK, a y testing and evaluation, well, I can't comment on it until we get our written assignments back. Don't talk about it. I got mine yesterday. I really don't want to think about the marks I've got. But the presentation was good. The way I got feedback was excellent and quick. Yes, it was. And I liked the way and the criteria of evaluation. Yeah, but I'm not much confident about the written work. I personally think it's stressful. Yes, I agree. Here also, they must tell us about the criteria of marking. About the writing class tests. But they told us. No, for the finals. What are they looking for and what is the criterion? How many marks for pass or fail? I never thought of it. It would be really helpful. OK, a y any other comments? I think student support is excellent. Yeah, me too. Excellent. I can't think of anything else. OK, a y so that's done. Thanks, Michael. No, thank you. That is the end of Section 3. You will now have some time to check your answers. Turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear an extract from the lecture given by a colonist from New Zealand about development of dairy farming in the country. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 35.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 35. Dairy farming in New Zealand commenced from a small beginning during the early days of a colonization by Europeans. The revenue from dairy farming is now the foremost part of the New Zealand economy, becoming an 11 billion New Zealand dollar industry by 2010. In 1814, the missionary Samuel Marsden introduced the first shorthorn dairy cows to the Bay of Ireland from New South Wales. From the 1840s, most settlements had farms with some shorthorn dairy cattle herds tended to be large near urban areas. The first dairy cooperative was established on Otage Peninsula in 1871. In 1881, the newly arrived colonist, William Bowron, gave a series of lectures propounding the notion that the institution of dairy factories for the mass production of cheese would be greatly advantageous to the economy of New Zealand. He was largely instrumental in the establishment of the Ash Button Cheese and Butter Factory at Flemington, managed by William Harding and son of the cheddar cheese founder Joseph Harding. The venture was a great triumph and consequently, Bowron was appointed Government Inspector of Dairy Factories in 1883. In this capacity, he chiefly facilitated the setting up of factories across the country until his death in 1890. He published three pamphlets on the manufacturing of cheese, butter and bacon in New Zealand. Now look at questions 36 to 40. Now listen to the second half of the recording and answer questions 36 to 40. By 1920, there were 600 dairy processing factories of which about 85% were owned by cooperatives. In the 1930s, there were around 500 cooperatives, but after World War II, improved transportation, processing technologies and energy systems led to a trend of consolidation where the cooperatives merged and became larger and fewer in number. By the late 1990s, there were four cooperatives, the Waikato-based New Zealand Dairy Group, the Taranaki-based Kiwi Cooperative Dairies, the Hokitika-based Westland Milk Products and Tatua Cooperative Dairy Company. New Zealand is the world's eighth largest milk producer with about 2.2% of world production. Total production was 1.3 billion kg milk solids and 8.38 billion New Zealand dollars of dairy products were exported in the year ending 30th September 2007. Traditional dairy production areas are the wetter areas of the country Waikato, Taranaki, Sutherland, Northland, Harawenua, Manawatu and Westland. Before the advent of refrigerated shipping in the 1880s, Dairy production was entirely for local consumption, with butter and cheese usually being produced on the farm, with the surplus being sold to the community via the local store. Small dairy factories began to be established in the 1880s, and soon there was one in almost every village in dairying regions. Production began to be centralised in the second half of the 20th century, with facilities such as a Fonterra plants at Vararova near Havera, Edendale, Clanderboy near Timaru and Teripa being the four largest in Southern Hemisphere. Vara River is also currently the leading dairy factory in the world by milk intake. Fonterra is the chief processor of milk in New Zealand. It processes 94.8% of all milk solids from dairy farms. Other huge dairy companies are Tatua Cooperative Dairy Company, Westland Milk Products and Sinlay. There are approximately 4.2 million dairy milking cows in New Zealand and 5.26 million dairy cattle in total by 30th June 2007, an increase from 3 million in 1982. In mid-2005, there were 12,786 dairy farms. 
with a total area of 2.1 million hectares. That is the end of section 4. Now you have some time to check your answers. That is the end of practice listening test 3.